Hey, it's John at Tinderbox Arts. Using Google Maps is a great way to plan a motorcycle trip, and a lot of us prefer this over other options. But when you need to get that route onto your Zumo XT made by Garmin, it can be a little bit of a hassle. So I'm going to describe in this video how I do it. It's definitely not the only way to do it, but it's the way I do it. And credit goes to my son who figured out a lot of this stuff <laughs> and taught me how to do it. Now Garmin makes a PC-based software called Basecamp, which allows you to do route planning, but it's, it's really not a good piece of software. Nobody likes it. I don't like it, so I don't even try to use it. All right, I'll make this as brief as I possibly can. There's two versions of Google Maps, right? There's a regular version. You don't even really need to be logged in to use that, and that's what most people tend to use when they just go to get directions locally or whatever. That's fine, uh, but what we want to use is something a little bit different. It's called Google My Maps, and that is a little different because you need to log in, you need to have a Google account, and that allows you to do some things that you can't do with the regular mapping. Now the regular mapping like you're looking at here, uh, you have a set of destinations over here on the left. You can only use up to 10 destinations. That's a limitation. And then it shows you on the map where you're going. And what's so nice about Google is I can zoom in and find hotels or whatever I need to do along my route. And it's very convenient. But the My Mapping is a little bit different. So where we want to be is Google My Maps, okay? So if I click on that, it's going to bring me to this screen right here. I'm already logged in. These are a bunch of maps that I've already made. Now, I'm not going to, this is not a tutorial about how to use Google My Maps. I'm going to assume you know how to use that. But I just want to make sure you understand that you're not using the regular Google Maps. You're using the My Maps. In this case, I'll go to day one because I have a whole bunch of days planned for my route. And when I open that up, you see here's my route, and it works in a similar way to the standard uh, mapping. Over here are the destination points, and you, again, only allowed 10 destination points um, per layer, because this has multiple layers. But what I've done here is made each individual day an individual map, and there's a reason for that. When Google makes their maps, they have a million different points here that are kind of hidden from you. So you're adding destination points, but in between each destination point are a million little dots there, uh, which help Google indicate what the route is. We're going to transfer those dots to the Garmin unit. And because of that, the Garmin unit has a limited number of individual spots that it can calculate. And if we just have a whole trip here, you know, multiple days, um, of all those little dots, they start to add up to the point that the Garmin unit is going to choke. So for that reason, it's best to have each individual day an individual map. So once you're happy with your map, you're going to go up here and there's three dots, which indicates a menu. I'll open that. And there's an option here, export to KML slash KMZ. I'll select that. And this brings up this dialog box. There's an export and there's an entire map or you can do a sing an individual layer. So in this case, I'm gonna stick with entire map. These check boxes I'll leave blank and I'm gonna hit download. So basically all we're doing is downloading all those in little individual dots that I talked about into a file. And that file we need to get to the Garmin unit. So this is step one. We've done the map. We're going to export that map and all those little dots that I talked about into a file. And then that file we need to get into the Garmin unit. So the intermediate step to get from that local file that we've already downloaded now to our PC up to the Garmin unit is this. It's a piece of software called Explore, published by Garmin. When you set up your Zumo XT, you should set up an account with Garmin and this Explore program or app, if you want to call it that, will be automatically tied or synchronized to your Garmin unit. And that's an important, important factor. So I've already set up that account. I'll leave that to another video. Uh, but once you set up that account, this Explore software is available to you for free. And now what we need to do is upload that local file that we downloaded from Google Maps to this Explore app. If we go over here, there's a little import, and this is a really important concept to understand. 
there are tracks and there are routes, okay? Um, tracks are individual points that might not even be on a road. It could be, you know, a hiking trail or anything. And that's the most specific, I guess I'll say, way of planning a route. If you import lines as routes, that's a more generalized thing. And that might be used for roads and things like that. But it's not always accurate for what you're trying to do. So no matter what you're doing, whether you're hiking or motorcycling or whatever, you always want to import the lines as tracks. So we're going to import data as tracks. And then it's going to ask for that file that we already downloaded to our local PC. And we're going to add it to, you know, a library or a collection. You can pick which one you want to do. Um, in this case, I added it to a collection that I've already created. And we're going to hit next. And then it'll ask for that file that we downloaded locally. So basically all I'm doing is I'm using Google Maps to create uh, my route. I'm downloading that route as a, as a file full of a million different points. Then that local file needs to be uploaded back into this Explore app or piece of software. And then once I do that, I will have that available in the Explore app. Now my example here, I've already downloaded 11 days worth of planning. So each day is a file, a KMZ file. So I have day one.kmz and so on. And you're looking here at the first day. Those uh, blue triangles there are my route. Now, this each file gets downloaded to this Explore app. The wonderful thing is that this app automatically syncs with your Garmin unit. Now, that assumes that you've set up an account and that's all working correctly. But once you do, all you're going to have to do is download these files and then it will sync automatically with your Garmin unit, meaning that these files will be automatically downloaded to your Garmin unit once it's turned on and uh, a network is available. So this is the intermediate step. Now this has automatically been sent to my Garmin unit. Now I can turn on the Garmin unit and look at my routes. All right, so I have my Garmin unit here. I'm just hand holding it and I'm indoors, so uh, it has no GPS signal. But uh, if we look at the main screen here and we go to apps, and then we go to tracks, you will see that those files that I uploaded to that Explore program have automatically synced with my unit here. So they downloaded all those files. I didn't have to do anything. It's all here. Again, that assumes you have an account set up. So if I go to day one and I clicked on that, this would calculate, if I hit go, uh, those tracks for me, but it's a track, not a route. And that's not necessarily useful when you're riding on the road. Um, and this is not going to be able to calculate because I'm indoors and it doesn't have a GPS. Uh, but a track, again, has all those little points. And if you want to know where a local gas station is or how long it is till you finish the route and that sort of thing, this is not really the way you want to go. So you can use tracks if you wish. But I think for most people, it's more helpful to have a route. So to convert the tracks to a route, Again, I'll go to apps, I'm going to go to tracks, and I'm going to pick which one. In this case, I'll, I'll pick day two, all right? So I'll hit day two, and that will bring up the track. Instead of saying go, I'm going to look at this little wrench up here. Click on that, scroll down here, and there's an option to convert to trip. That's what I want to do. So I'm taking this file, which is a track or tracks, and I'm converting it to a trip. And I'll say start to finish. You pick a name that you want for it. And now it's saving day two, that file, and converting it to the trip planner. And this will take a little bit. And you'll have to do this for each day uh, that you plan. But it goes fairly quickly. And then you're going to get the message that that file was saved to the trip planner. So now let's go look at trip planner. If we go here, we can look at save trips. And there's day two. That's what we just saved. If I click on day two, I'll hit OK. It, it's just giving you a warning message there. And this gives you beginning and end. I'm going to hit go. Begin. And it'll calculate the route for me based on those tracks. So it's not using uh, you know, the smarts in uh, the GPS itself. It's using the tracks that I planned earlier. Uh, no. 
and then it's going to give you the map like you would normally see and you can hit start so now I have a route now it's been a long trip but <laughs> what we did to review we started in Google my maps I planned the route exactly how I wanted it not necessarily how Google would send me but how I wanted it then I saved that as a file on my local PC I uploaded that file from my local PC to the Garmin Explore app that automatically synced with my Garmin unit here once it's on my Garmin unit I can convert that file which is a tracks file to a route and that's where I am now it's a bit of a long trip I, I'm not here to defend this and there are other ways of doing this maybe I don't know really that they're any easier but there are other ways of doing it uh, but this is the quickest way I found to make this work and it does in the end give you what you need it's a little ponderous but at least I know it works